Hello everyone. So today I thought I'll probably share a few things related to the automation rules. Now automation rules is something that we all love on cloud. And uh, when we when we use these automation rules, we of course have to maintain them. We also we, we also have have to of course ensure that uh, there is some kind of uh, change control process because the also these automation rules can actually uh, impact quite a lot of projects if you don't really configure them properly. So basically the thing is that because these aut automation rules will do automation and these automations will either help or assist people, user who users who are using your Jira instance and uh, you don't really want to basically surprise them. So I made, I think, few videos on uh, best practices or basically you know, things that you should do using, um, when, when it comes to automation rule, I'll probably just share that particular uh, video link. Uh, so if you go to my website and if you go to Mastering Jira Cloud Automation and if you search for best practices, I have this video called 10 Best Practices where I did talk about these things. And uh, the thing is that I want, wanted to focus on uh, version control and I've covered this in the past and I'll probably share my tips and uh, the way I do it because I do manage Jira instances where there are a lot of rules and it can be a painful thing to do, to be honest. Now, I always uh, take a backup of the whole uh, set. For example, if you go to your uh, option on top called, uh, you know, this three dots and if you click on the export rules what this will do this will actually give you a very big json file that you can uh, create on your local or maybe somewhere on your local computer that you can of course you know then uh, um, version control so it will be a file nothing but a file a very big file that you can uh, just manage in your repository that is one way and uh, you should do it uh, regularly. That would be like, I think the best thing that you can do. But the problem is that when you are working on a rule, let us say you have this rule, let us say, you know, access issues in Epic or whatever rule that you are working on, you may want to do any change, maybe a small change here and there. And uh, then of course you want to uh, make sure that there is a backup. So you can make it a point that whenever you are making a change in this rule, <laughs> you can, uh, try to uh, take the backup again. This can work, right? Now, what I recommend is that uh, wherever applicable, just try to export your rule and it will also, you know, create this uh, JSON, but only for that particular rule. And uh, try, I mean, this is of course one, one more way of doing it. Like instead of version controlling each and everything, because you may have other Jira instance, uh, not other Jira instance, but, but other Jira administrator, ad administrator. So you can actually take this uh, one by one, uh, this backup, and uh, then you can version control it. Uh, I also at the same time prefer, uh, I mean, it is, uh, again, it's not really a version control thing to be honest, but it is something like a cool trick or not, not a cool trick, it's not a trick, I mean, just a way. Uh, if you look at any rule, most of the rules are actually nothing but that you can open just in one view. So just take a snapshot of this, that is it. Uh, because you will get, because the, the main thing that you care about in the rule is uh, these options on the left hand side. By looking at these options on the left hand side, it will, in most cases, not always, in most cases, uh, it will give you an idea. And ideally, you should uh, try to create a confluence page for each and every rule. Uh, it may seem like a lot of work, but it is not. And uh, imagine that you have like, I mean, first of all, you you shouldn't really have like a lot of rules. Try to optimize the usage of the rules as well. And uh, what you can do is let us say you have, let us say 50 rules, right? So you can just, of course, uh, create a page for that particular rule. And then that particular page should have uh, uh, at the same time a copy of the export and then uh, maybe paste the screenshot and maybe of course try to I mean, because when you take a screenshot, you don't, have to, you don't have to explain. And you anyways have the JSON file, you know, that export file. So you can actually, in a way, create your own repository. And uh, it is also a wonderful way to 
right? because when, I, when i'm trying to do something with rules i don't really care about uh, the automation part i care more about these things because i want to know okay can i do this can i do that can i uh, uh, can i maybe update uh, let us say uh, like can i clone an issue and then at the same time link it to the original trigger issue and most of the times i just need to know about these uh, actions on the left hand side and by looking at the screenshot i am able to save time because uh, you know the json file is not massively readable i mean it's i mean i mean of course once you know what is happening you can but uh, th- because when you're working on the rule you have to there is no like pro- programmatic way i mean you can obviously import but you're not really writing writing some code and you're not really doing version control from here so you have to basically rely on the interface ui to create or build a rule and uh, do those automations and that is why i think uh, uh doing these things really help in long run and uh, when you have a conference page maybe create a page for each and every rule and then uh, make sure that uh, you are updating that particular page uh, with any change that you're doing and uh, uh also take the full backup so few things number one create a page on conference number two uh take the snapshot of the individual uh, file number 3 um also paste the screenshot number 4 take the take the snapshot take the export of the whole set of rules uh what i used to do uh this could be number fifth option i have a folder uh on my local computer which is of course version control where i have uh, i mean if you look at my rules my rules are named like this like auto hyphen transition hyphen epic hyphen stories so basically what i do is i basically just create a rule with these names and uh, i mean this is just a practice that i f- follow i don't really tr- I, i try not to have spaces in my file names wherever applicable not always but wherever possible so that you know i can easily manage them uh, spaces sometimes cause issues i mean not really but uh, sometimes it can cause issues especially if you're doing some searching and filtering and especially if you're using a linux by, because i work on linux and uh, uh based on the shell that you're using spaces might cause problems so i prefer using uh, the hyphens and uh, these hyphens also give me a way to you know define some kind of nomenclature so i also have a folder on my local computer for each and every rule in individual rule and whenever i make a change in that rule um it could be a small change i just do an export i save it to that particular folder and um and of course you know i i, I make sure that it is uh, committed to the repository uh, which is which may sound a bit too much but that is the ultimate way because you are actually individually controlling each and every rules uh, changes uh, if you're doing it for the whole one uh, i mean if you're doing this export of all the rules the problem is that it will give you i believe just one not really individual files which is uh, probably a bit cumbersome because you want to have that separation because i i just look at the file name uh, if i have to open it on my local computer i just open it sometimes i also modify the rule straight away and then i rip i like reuse it sometimes i open the rule and i think i made a couple of videos like if you modify that particular file i'm sure there is a video somewhere uh, where you can actually combine those two root those two rules together um because you may not really want to um You, you may not really want to do this on the ui because it can take a lot of time and uh, i think i made a video uh consolidate i'm just trying to find the um f- find the uh merge rules yeah this one this video so basically i, I have i have covered this if you want to merge two rules together i mean if, from the ui it can take some time but if you are just using uh, json and if you know how it works I mean of course you have to read it so you can also do that you do these fancy things it's a bit too much uh, I, i don't really think atlas will recommend it but there is i mean it's, you're not really going to break anything right but you won't really find this in the official documentation it's more about something so i i think someone was asking a question on the community can we modify the json and combine rules then i thought oh, i never really tried it let me try it so i tried it and it worked and i made a video about it so that is how that is what i do i i share things uh and uh, yes that is it if you want to uh, learn if you want to learn uh, um automation rules i have free videos a lot of videos i mean if you look at the list so many videos i mean can you imagine like i have spent so much time 
I think I have 84 videos in total, just focused on, purely focused on Atlas, like Jira Cloud Automation. But at the same time, uh, also learn, uh, I mean, it depends uh, on what you all, what, what exactly you want to learn. But if you want to learn uh, automation rules, then uh, learning REST API can also be beneficial because you can make REST calls and there are things that you can do with both, I mean, by combining automation rules and REST API. So you can also make a web call, like a uh, like a REST call using uh, automation. So plenty of things that you can do, wonderful things that you can do without writing much code uh, on Jira Cloud. So um, the, the, these are my videos. So uh, that is all. That is all I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.